I've been uh, pulling out the H&R race springs and putting in the ground control coilovers. Here they are. And uh, the front springs I ordered were seven inch. Should have ordered six. They're just about an inch too long. I can't uh, get the car down to the right height I want. It's about half an inch, three quarters of an inch higher than I want it to be when it's in the fully lowered position. And the rear haven't dropped it down yet, but um, it will in a second. I think I got a lot more adjustability in the rear anyway, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it sits in a sec. So the setup is inch and a half gap at the front because that's the lowest it will go with the seven inch springs, and I've got lots of adjustability in the rear. So I've got it set at an inch and a half as well, and I've tucked the wheels in a couple more millimeters. Didn't go crazy, but because uh, I don't think I need to, so I um, will not be rubbing. I've got lots of room there, and this is way stiffer now. Let's see if we can see how much it moves when I jump up and down in this corner with 175 pounds. So it's. It's a lot stiffer than the stop than the H and R race springs at the rear. I'd estimate the H and R race springs are probably 200. And I'll jump on it and we'll see how much it moves. It's a practically nothing at all. And uh, that's the way it was before. Anyway, we'll see what it's like on the track.
looked a little funny being up inch and a half uh, gap but uh, it worked incredibly well on the track you can just hustle this car on the track with a crazed abandon um, very neutral now with the 350 pound rear springs and um, yeah the brakes are working fantastic the only problem I just had is I just pumped uh, about a liter of oil out the breather tube um, and all over the inside of the engine um, and I may have just had too much oil but maybe I need to take one of the VW Vortex members up on their offer of an oil pan because I don't think this oil pan is uh, enough for the job. Uh, this thing with the slicks is throwing quite a bit of uh, g-force around and uh, don't think uh, it's containing the oil. The oil is moving around too much. But the thing just feels fantastic on the track and I'm you know several seconds quicker <laughs> than I was uh last time so yeah this thing is starting to work nicely okay i want to show you guys some of the data logger results i have got here all right so this is one lap of the track down if you look at the mouse here down at the bottom you can see there's a couple of laps here blue is the oil temperature so the highest the oil temperature goes is 237 Fahrenheit so it was about 65 Fahrenheit 18 to 20 degrees Celsius outside so a little cool but uh, green this green line along here is water temperature or coolant temperature so my coolant maximum temperature was 203 so that radiator does an amazing job and um, so I'll just turn those off for a sec um, and you will be able to see this is uh, green as speed so my maximum speed is just under 150 kilometers an hour it says miles per hour but it's kilometers per hour um, and uh, so it's reasonably fast and um, and then the RPM you can see I, I didn't really rev the engine at all so max RPM uh, is is uh, 74.50 and um, you know compare that where I was a thousand rpm higher when I was at the track the last time um, so I'm not pushing the car at all and the fact that it's two seconds faster than a Cayman S 917 like the latest model uh, and that's a car that does 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds and does the quarter mile at 12.2 at uh, or 12 zero at 120 miles an hour so it's a it's a it's a serious performance car and uh, I was driving the Cayman S on the track with um, Continental's best street uh, performance tires so I'm not doing apples to apples because I've got the Hoosier slicks on here obviously the Cayman's going to be several seconds faster on the Hoosier A7s or the R7s um, my uh, A7s uh, you know weren't fully heated up um, tracks a little bit cold I didn't push the car that hard so we are have to wait until late next spring to get some fast lap times because we're now in the Pacific Northwest getting cold but um, you know you can see if I get the RPMs up and I start pushing the car harder uh, there's a lot of potential left um, with the car and you can see I'm babying it around the track quite a bit so anyway, I just thought I would show you this stuff kind of fun um, and um, well, one last thing is oil pressure so I will kill the speed and the RPM just for a sec to show you that my oil pressure never gets too low and when I put it up against engine RPM uh, do other both red but um, you can see that the oil pressure is dropping because the RPM is dropping so the fact that I was puking oil um, I didn't puke enough of it out to, to starve the oil pump, uh, but I'm going to still switch to that INA um, custom fabricated um, windage tray uh, that Mike uh, is providing me and um, that he's had fabricated for his car and he's going to give to me and I'll show you that in the next video. And I'm also going to run a, a full catch can with a return line. I'll close the return line on the street. But on the track, I'll leave the return line open so I can get um, the oil that uh, pumps out the front of the block through the PVC breather 
um, that breather hole. If I catch any more oil, even with the windage tray, it'll get into the catch can and it'll feed back into the sump. There's a second return line uh, in this uh, racing sump pump or the uh, racing baffle pan. And uh, that'll, that'll be something I'll utilize to, uh, to, to capture the oil and not do what it did at the track, which is to um, spray oil all over the engine bay. And I'm sure I got some of the track, which makes me a very unpopular guy at the track. Yeah. Nobody noticed it. Uh, we did a drive around the track, couldn't see anything, but it was close to uh, doing an oil down, which would have been super uncool. Okay, I'm not probably going to be back at the track now until... April. So uh, we're going to start wrenching and doing the oil control system and uh, otherwise getting the car sort of tuned up a bit. And I got new six inch tall front springs going in and I'll get the ride height down about an inch for next next time around.